Hi there, I'm Laura. Um, I'm just waiting for some people to come on live. And today we're going to talk about something that's going to be really, really difficult for me to discuss, to be perfectly honest. Because this has fractured my life. And this is the first time that I'm going to be talking about this publicly. Um, but I feel the time has come because uh, there are lots of people who need to hear what I have to say. So just while we wait for some people, I, I'm just going to try and share this video on some groups. We'll see what happens so um if there are any sm fans watching hello welcome uh please don't request music today we're not going to be playing music this is really 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 important that uh that we discuss this there are a lot of people suffering um from this um and it's not easy it's not none of it's easy at all but it's really important that we discuss it um and everything that I'm going to talk about is, um, I've made some notes, I have learned from reading YouTube videos, um, all kinds of stuff. Um, so I am, like I said, I'm just quickly sharing on a couple of uh, narcissism groups in case any other people from there want to watch. Surviving narcissism. There we go. Surviving abuse. Okay, so I'm going to talk about something today that's really bloody awful, to be honest. Um, it's toxic psychological manipulation. Okay? Um, it's hard. It's devastating. And this is the first time that actually I've decided to come and talk about publicly what has happened to me um but rather than sitting here saying to you oh this happened and that happened and he did this and he did that you know what what i thought was is if i just cover what narcissism actually is then you'll get a much be better understanding of it so if you could please do me a favor and share this video that would be fantastic because i guarantee you there will be people you know who you work with, who are in your family, men or women who are suffering from this and you don't know it and they might not know it, but they're seriously very unhappy and struggling exceptionally to the max degree. Um, the term narcissist is a broad term. Um, they could be extreme in their behaviours and be violent uh, and emotionally very, very abusive. But they can also have a much more subtle narcissistic personality. Um, so it's a spectrum, basically. Um, but they all have the same sort of tactics and behaviour that they use to manipulate other people. Now, I just want to make this clear that a lot of this is directed at maybe being in a relationship with a narcissist, male or female. But also, as you're listening to what I'm saying, I want you to also keep in mind that this could apply to anyone in your life. It could be a parent, it could be a sister, a brother, it could be a work colleague, it could be anybody, a, a really close friend. Um, yeah, so narcissistic personality disorder is actually real. It is a psychiatric condition. But the problem is hardly anyone gets diagnosed with it because guess what? In order to get help with something, number one, you have to recognize there's a problem. And number two, you have to actively want to go and seek that help, okay? So for me, I've been diagnosed with uh, autism and ADHD. Um, they are also mental health um, dif uh, difficulties. And I knew I had those things, so I decided to do all my research and uh, go to my GP, get my referral to the psychiatrist and everything, go on a waiting list, you know, jump through some hoops, and then I have my assessment and now I have my diagnosis. Um, but... Someone who's suffering with narcissistic personality disorder, they're never really gonna do that, yeah? They're not. Because they depend on their supply, yeah? Which is their victim. 
um, in order to make them feel good about themselves. So what I want you to remember throughout all of this is actually the narcissist really doesn't like themselves. They really do not have high self-esteem at all. Their self-esteem is very low. Um, they don't see much value in themselves. So they inflate their ego. They have this inflated sense of, of self-importance and stuff um, to keep the person there with or the person who is their victim just beneath them to make them feel better. So, um, yeah, so they all have the same sort of tactics and behavior that they use to manipulate other people, okay? Because narcissists, a narcissist reason for being is basically this. I win, you lose, and everyone else is to blame for everything that I do, right, okay? And the way that they go about enabling that to happen <clears throat> that everyone else is at fault, particularly if you are in a relationship with them, is through these following 10 tactics or signs that you're being manipulated. So I'm gonna go through 10 things now um, that if any of these ring any bells with you, then hopefully it's gonna to start to help you make sense of it. Um, so number one uh, is gaslighting something called gaslighting. What this is, is they do or say something bad or wrong or behave badly towards you. Um, it might be subtle or it might be extreme. And at the end of it, when you try and call them out on it, they then say, well, that didn't happen. You know, you're crazy, you're imagining it. it it's a really insidious form of manipulation because you, your gut instinct is telling you that what they were doing was wrong, you know, yet they're telling you that you imagined it you know so you're crazy you're exaggerating things so in your head you have this battle do I trust my gut instincts or are they right you know um, and because narcissists want to feed off of you and build up their fragile ego and inflated sense of entitlement you know they really make you believe that they are right and your instincts are wrong yeah so straight away that kind of after a while drives you a bit crazy so that's that's the first one that's gaslighting the second one uh, is called mirroring or projection so they mirror or project onto you the behavior the behavior that is in fact what they're doing does that make sense so for example you're lying they might say to you you're lying and actually you're the one that's being totally open and honest and they are of course lying or the classic one and I had this as well from my ex um, you're having an affair uh, like constantly accusing you of having an affair when actually it's actually them that's being unfaithful. So that's the second one, mirroring uh, or projection. The third sign that you're being manipulated by somebody is um, crazy circular conversations. Um, this is really, really crazy. And it just sparks off all these memories of, of what I went through. Um, so if you challenge a narcissist or question their behavior or disagree with them, basically, what they get you into is like crazy conversations from hell. <laughs> so it turns into an argument over like a benign comment that you make. So you ask yourself, how did this go from me just asking some really simple question to like a personal attack? Um, you know, that questions what I say, my friends, my family, my childhood and everything I've ever believed in. You know, it, it really is like a whirlwind in, in, in the mind. Um, and you get to the point where you sort of think, I have no idea where that came from or where it started. And you go round and round and round in these absolutely ridiculous conversations. Yeah, so that's number three. Um, <clears throat> number four, um, blanket statements. So... When, you're, when you bring up with a narcissist that their behaviour is unacceptable, you get these sort of blanket statements like, oh, you're too sensitive, or you're impossible to please, or something like, oh, so you're the perfect one now, you know? Anything other than them taking responsibility for their actions and their bad behaviour, okay? And again, that could be related to anything. It really could be related to anything. Like I remember once being pushed into the wardrobe door um, <laughs> and the wardrobe door broke. Um, and he told me <laughs> when, when I was crying my eyes out and I said, I can't believe you've just done that to me. You know, that's abuse. And, and he just looked down on me and just said, well, you shouldn't make me so angry then. Why did you make me so angry? Really? Yeah. Um, funny, not really. Number five, um, shifting the goalposts. Oh my goodness. This one is so, so common, shifting the goalposts. So they will set rules, not necessarily, um, they won't actually tell you that they're rules, but they will set rules, which are of course double standards. So 
<laughs> they don't have to follow them, but you do, basically. Uh, so they'll set these rules that you have got to abide by, basically. And you go twisting yourself up trying to meet these rules and standards just to keep the peace and keep them happy. Um, but no matter what you do, the goalposts will be moved, okay? This used to happen to me all the time. The reason they do this is because they want to always keep you on the back foot, always making you feel insecure so you never quite know where you stand. Do you know what I mean? It, it's, it's horrible. It, it really is horrible. So one day it could be anything. It could be that they want their cup of tea made in a certain way with three sugars and milk or whatever. The next day you give them that cup of tea exactly as they've requested the day before and they're like, what the hell's going on? Why have you put too much sugar in this? That is a classic example. So you're wrong straight away. You're wrong because you've put too many sugars in the tea. Yeah. Um, again, you know, you might be now sitting here watching this thinking, what, what, why is she discussing all this? You know, why is this abusive? Trust me, it will become clear. These are signs. These are warning signs. It isn't that someone make, asking you to make a cup of tea is, is abusive, okay? I want you to really understand the context of what we're discussing here, okay? So number six, threatening you, okay? Now this can take many forms. It can be very subtle or it can be quite obvious and overt. So these could be just the sort of what you know would happen if you challenge them or don't abide by those rules they've just set. Or it might be quite direct. So it could be a threat of violence because that violence has happened before or it could be um, financial a threat that they'll cut you off financially or it might even be a threat where they say well if I can't have you no one will you know or they're gonna kill themselves oh my god I had that I had that I had a phone call um, I'm at the t I'm at the train station and I'm gonna jump in front of a train because I can't live anymore because of you I was like oh I just didn't even know what to say. But inside, I was ripped apart because I loved him. I loved him. And they know this, you see, they know. They're, they're very, very clever. So all threats in whatever form are a, are a way to manipulate and control you, no matter what form that threat takes, okay? You have to know that. So the next one, number seven, is something called triangulation. Now, triangulation is when they bring somebody else into the equation. So it could be anybody, really. Um, it could be their mum. They might say, for example, oh, my mum agrees with me and thinks you're crazy because of what you think about me and my behaviour. Um, or it might be another love interest. This, this is quite common, apparently. So if they start to feel they're losing control over you, they might start to line up the next person <laughs> um, and make you aware that that person has come into the frame. And that actually... That actually makes you then feel unsettled, insecure, and probably a bit jealous. Um, and all that is, again, to put you on the back foot so you are easier to be manipulated and exploited, basically. Um, another one, um, number eight, is using intimacy as a weapon against you. Oh, my God. And I definitely experienced this. Um, so this is where, in those wonderful tender moments together with you, you open up to them because, of course, that's the only way you can really connect with someone and get close to them is really to be vulnerable with them. So you share something about yourself that no one else knows, and then later, bam, they use it against you. So because narcissists are brilliant at knowing how to press your buttons, you see, and that sort of intimate knowledge that you've given them is exactly what they want to hear to use as a weapon against you later. Um, what I haven't got written here, which I think would also come under that um, using intimacy as a weapon against you, can be withholding sex from you. Um, but obviously not it depends on on the context do you know what i mean so you usually know you usually know when if they're using an excuse not to sleep with you that it's sort of with if, if they're not feeling very well you you'll usually be able to tell whether it is genuine or not um sorry joseph i haven't read any comments yet i'm so busy but um yeah um but then another thing can equally be, well, you don't have sex how I want you to. You don't do the things I want you to do. So let's just not bother. And then you don't get anything. You don't get any like intimate things at all. You know, you're just completely cut off. Um, 
So number nine, um, I've got here, testing the waters. So, <sighs> testing the waters. Narcissists and abusive people do this all the time. This is literally the very first sign, I think, that you will see when you meet someone. So they do it when they first meet you, just to see whether you'll accept abuse and how much you'll accept. Um, and some people will run, will run a mile. And if you don't, then they'll think, great, I'll test again. So as soon as you've allowed them to test that boundary and get away with it, then they'll just push you harder and test the boundary over and over again. And they do that, as I said before, by doing things like shifting the goalposts and gaslighting and mirroring and all those sorts of things. It's just testing the boundaries and pushing them as far as they can go. So they're trying to work out what you will and will not accept from them, basically. Um, I've got a friend who is in a relationship currently still with a narcissist and um, and she said to me that if or if he ever cheats if I ever found out he's cheated on me then that's it um, and I believe her I believe if she finds that out she'll be gone I don't know if he has uh, but I don't think he I don't think he has I don't know but who knows um, so yeah um, it's powerful powerful stuff it could be that you find out that they've cheated on you but your need and your craving for them is so much that you forgive them and you give them another chance um so number 10 is hoovering hoovering which is exactly what it says so when you get it's when you get sucked back in by them basically so um You've, you, it's usually when you've come to the end of your tether, you can't take any more. You're starting to really see things for what they are. You're seeing all the red flags and you're thinking, hang on a minute, I'm really not happy with this person and I need to leave. So usually if you found the courage to leave them and they feel that they're losing control over you is when they'll start to suck you back in. So because narcissists are like masters of disguise, like seriously, and masters of manipulation, honestly. They're the best actors in the world that they could win Oscars, like for real. Um, so I want you to imagine that Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde thing now, if you've ever heard of that. Um, so what they do is they stop being Mr. Hyde, the nasty one, and bam, Dr. Jekyll's mask comes on and there they are remorseful they love you oh my god I need you more than ever please don't leave me and all these promises to change like I'll be different from now on and it'll never happen again and that's when they suck you back in and that's what we call hoovering it's called hoovering it's great isn't it? but it's not great it's terrible but and what happens is you start to feel more sorry for them it's really bizarre you because basically people like us who are victims of this abuse we are empathic people we are empaths okay that's e-m-p-a-t-h if you want to look that up on google empath what is an empath then it will describe perfectly who i am who some of you watching this video are if you're relating to what i'm saying you probably are an empath now an empath is is, is a perfect bait for a narcissist um so so just have a look on that um, and that's how we're able to be sucked back in because we always want to believe them. We always want to believe that they're sorry and that they're, go they're going to change because like I'm saying, they're such gifted actors. Um, so you end up starting to feel more sorry for them about the abuse and stuff. Sorry, rather than being sorry for the abuse and suffering that they've caused you. That all goes out the window because actually in the end, what they do is they program your mind to a point where you think that every time they hurt you physically or mentally that it's your fault you end up believing trust me i've been there you end up believing oh my god how how did this happen and this what did i do this must be my fault and obviously they take great joy in telling you when things are your fault like when i was pushed into the wardrobe door and the wardrobe door came off the hinges and i was on the floor crying my eyes out at him how could you do that to me but that was your fault laura that was your fault how was this my fault well because you knew what was going to upset me and you pushed me to it and whatever whatever and you know you pressed my buttons so they're very quick to point out when everything is your fault basically so you do you end up believing that any abuse that's occurring is because of you and it is your fault so um 
it's a, this is a this hoovering is a really powerful tool that they use just to pull you in back in and the reason that you do get pulled in is because you're so desperate for that lovely gorgeous person to come back that you first met you know um that you want to believe them you know and that is their trick it's like the emotional bait and switch yeah so what that does is it makes you keep waiting and hoping for them to change right and you really believe that they will you really do i mean it's it's, it's crazy so <coughs> sorry if you look at all these signs they really are all of them very very manipulative and very insidious you know um, and if you look at the very nature of what a narcissist is um, all of those signs and tactics that I've just told you about um, a narcissist manipulating you all of that is designed so that they do not have to take responsibility for their actions okay it's all designed so that you accept responsibility for everything that goes wrong in the relationship or friendship like I say it could be anybody um, and everything that they do you accept the blame for you know you see so it's just like what I was just saying so so yeah so how do you win an argument with a narcissist because trust me I think I had enough arguments to last me a complete lifetime that completely screwed my brain up and I can tell you now sorry you actually can't and again I really learned this the hard way I would I would argue and argue and argue and argue and scream and scream until I'd lost my voice um, <laughs> But actually, it was all a complete waste of time. And I wish I knew back then what I know now. Oh my goodness, because I would have been gone. It would have been over. Um, so you can't, you just can't win an argument against them. You might as well, honestly, just go and get a cup of tea instead. Because the very nature of a narcissist is making everybody responsible for their actions and their behavior, making everyone else, the world, you, to blame for it. It's that I win, you lose, and I'm not to blame for anything. So if you have somebody like that, who has an overinflated sense of self, sense of ego and sense of entitlement, they don't even know that what they're doing is manipulative or abusive because they actually see themselves as the victim. This is the crazy, crazy bit, yeah? They really do. And they will tell you that too. Like I say, like, poor me, I'm the victim. You're the one that's doing all this to me, you know. <laughs> They do, they do. I remember once that I had my 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 little baby in my arms and, and he took him from me and he was only about eight months old and he took him from me and he was gonna walk out the door with him and I said, where are you going? Because we'd had an argument and he was like, I'm not staying in this house with you while you're being like this. I said, well, okay, but you're not taking my baby. So I went to grab my baby back. He wouldn't let him go. And I was very aware that I didn't want to hurt the baby do you know what I mean? I didn't want it to become like a tug of war over the baby, you see. So I just let go, but I was screaming at him, crying my eyes out, screaming, begging him to give me my baby. And he just stepped forward onto my feet. He stepped onto my feet. He was up here, six foot three, stepped onto my feet and put his arm up like that, right in my throat. His arm was up in my throat and he was so strong. He pushed so hard that I couldn't breathe. And he stayed like that for about a minute and a half. It was a, it was quite long, not a few seconds. It was quite long and I couldn't breathe. And all these things were flashing through my head. And then he just stepped back and then went and pushed me. And I just flew across the room and landed. Thank God I landed on like an armchair because otherwise I could have been really seriously injured. And I did call the police. I did call the police about that um, and they came. And they said to him, why did you do that? And he said, because she wouldn't get out of my way. And they said, but <laughs> don't you understand that actually that is completely unacceptable and it's completely wrong. Um, no matter what situation you're in, no matter what someone else is saying to you or, or, or doing, you know, it, it's never okay to do that. And he said, well, she should, she just needs to know that she needs to get out of my way. And he said that you know this is my whole point about this they really see themselves as the victim they really are so screwed up this is why this is such an extreme personality disorder which they are never ever going to recover from 
The only way they can do that is if they get help. The only way, as I said at the beginning of the video, the only way they will ever get help is if they want to admit that something is wrong in the first place. And they don't want to do that. They don't want to do that while they've got you to make them feel good about themselves. Um, so yeah, so they're not gonna change. The only way they can change is if they wanna change themselves. We can't change anybody really. All we could do is realize that and understand the signs that we're being manipulated. But there are ways that you cannot be manipulated by them. There are ways that you can step off the roller coaster, not play their games. And you know what? Knowledge is power. It really is. I cannot stress that enough. Once you know the rules of the game, like those 10 signs, and trust me, there are even more than that. I mean, this video doesn't even cover the majority. You know, these are just the very, very basics. Um, but yeah, um, you don't even have to play that game anymore. You know, you can just step off the roller coaster and it's game over. Um, and once I had that knowledge, it completely changed my life. It really did. Um, and that was how I took the courageous step to begin to become free from manipulation and break free from abusive relationships and being free from that heartache and pain that I went through trying to win that argument that I didn't deserve this abuse and wasn't to blame. Um, but you know, I'm gonna end in a second. So you spend all this time and emotional energy trying to fix them and trying to win the arguments because you want to prove to them that you are lovable and worthy of them. But you know what? Don't waste your energy, seriously, you know? So I just want you to ask yourself, what is a healthier way of being? Do I wanna look back on my life in 10 years time and regret it? Or do I wanna look back in 10 years time and still wanna win that argument that's unwinnable? You know, um, it might seem really overwhelming right now um, if you're in this kind of relationship, because when you're in the midst of all that craziness and that manipulation, it feels so hard to step away. But you can. Um, and then even when you are away, loads of people go back. Often it takes six or seven times to leave a narcissist for good because they're so good at what they do. And the best thing they do is is this Jekyll and Hyde thing you see so they they are two people um and they do this thing that's called love bombing yeah so whenever they're gonna lose you or whatever they up their game and all of a sudden they're taking you out for dinner or they're buying you flowers or they're they're doing this or they're doing that and, and they're showing you real that you feel is really genuine love giving you hope it's just like giving you crumbs of affection just enough to for you to go <gasps> They do still love me. They are still that person, that really lovely person that I met in the beginning. You grab it and then it all, the cycle starts all over again and, and, and it never, ever, ever, ever stops. It really doesn't. Um, so yeah, so um, don't waste any time. You know, today is the day that you can walk towards living that life that you love because I know that I'm now going to look back on my life with I'm not going to look back with regret. I'm going to look back and say, thank God I learned what those signs were. Thank God I understand how I was being manipulated and stopped it and made the choice to change my life. Um, also, the thing is, if you have children with this person, it, it's it's just even, it's even worse. You know, it, it, it's, it's, it's awful. And the kids really suffer. You have to trust me. They really, really suffer. Um, so it's going to feel even harder to leave if you've got children with them but it's actually even more important to do that if you have kids because it's not only crucial that we teach our kids what is and is not an acceptable way to be treated in life you know and we are their role models but their narcissistic parent can never really love them how they deserve to be loved do you see what I mean? Um, many narcissists often also abuse their children too. And there's a lot of stuff on, on the internet about this. You can look it all up. It's all over, it's all out there for you to watch and to learn. Um, there's lots of support. There's YouTube videos that go into more depth. There's Facebook groups for narcissistic abuse survivors. There's online courses. Um, there's many, many books. Um, there's also, if you're in the UK, local women's refuge outreach support and freedom programs that help all victims of domestic abuse. Um, I've posted information in the description of this video I've posted um, where I've got a lot of this information from the, the main um, channels on YouTube that have been so fantastic that I've learned so much from it's incredible I've also posted I think three Facebook groups that you can join there's also a webinar link there 
by a lady called Kim Saeed and that webinar is free but she does at the end obviously advertise her proper courses that do cost money but you don't you don't have to do that to, you know you can if you want but you don't have to um but yeah so um you can be safe and you can turn your life around so that you can walk towards that that better life basically um and i think the first thing is is to learn more learn more click on the links explore these youtube channels go in the facebook groups you will see what you can ask questions in the facebook groups uh, uh, you know whatever you want to ask there's people there that are going through the same thing have been through we're all at different stages you see in in the journey um but you know it's this this kind of dysfunction gives you this sort of brain fog so sometimes you just can't see the wood for the trees you don't really understand what's happening to you so that is the number one thing to do is to start to understand and recognize what is happening what is going on um and once you start learning about that and you learn about things like trauma bonding you know um this hurt and reserve cycle you know it's a great deal of pain mixed with periods of calm and you're offered these crumbs of kindness to keep you hooked it's it's, it's awful um but normally normal relationships just don't cause you to form these trauma bonds do you know what i mean um going from feelings of hatred to feelings of love you know what i mean being shown by your partner these feelings of hate one minute you're the most beautiful person or handsome man in the world and the next minute you're just the most disgusting thing ever and they treat you like you're someone that something they've stepped in stuck on their shoe it's awful um so yeah so that those crumbs of kindness they give you you just end up feeling immense gratitude because actually underneath we all want to be loved we all have that need to be loved whether it's by a parent um, a sibling a husband a wife a boyfriend a girlfriend um, a friend it could be a, fr a friend you know it could be anybody um, another thing that we tend to do is we end up protecting the narcissist so you know you need to listen to your loved ones when they're trying to tell you that something is wrong because quite often we don't and we just go oh you don't understand him and you don't understand her and this is you know you don't know what's happening you're not in it and you know do you know my, my ex used to tell me that he used to go Laura I don't know why you talk to your friends about your problems and I'd be like because they're like my close friends but Laura they don't care they don't care about you they go through enough stuff on their own I guarantee you they don't care about you and I used to think oh my god so because of that I never used to tell them things anymore you see but he was so clever because he knew that if I told them things that were happening to me that they would tell me that that's wrong that they would tell me that that's not normal but when you can't communicate to anybody about things and have someone else tell you that that's not right and that's not normal sometimes we just don't recognize it and this is why another really common thing that these narcissists do is they cut you off from your friends and family if they can and it can start by really really subtle things like they can just start by saying you know that joanne or you know that kwame well actually i don't really trust him and i don't really trust her because i've heard this and this and this and this and when i googled them i saw this and this and this and on their facebook this and this and this you see they start planting these little doubts in your head so then the next time you see joanne or you see kwame you think Ooh. oh hi yeah i've got to go you know and you don't really want to interact with them because there's these little seeds in your head of they might have done this and they might have done that and what if what if this has happened you know it's, it's awful so this isolation depriving you of social support they, they're going to pick holes in your friends and your family you know because they don't want you to have social support they don't want you to have a life away from them my ex never even wanted me to leave the house he never said that but he was very very good because i was disabled and i had back and pelvic pain and every time i was going to go out the door it used to take me time to put my shoes on do my laces up in that time he was gone he was gone out the door and he'd be running he'd be running and i'd be standing at the door going where are you going i'm going out where are you going because we had the baby so i couldn't leave the baby and he knew that and he'd be like oh i'm just going to work or i'm just going here or i'm just going there and then he's gone he's actually gone then out of sight and he wouldn't come back for two or three hours but once i i cottoned onto this i used to then ring my mother who lived down the road 
can you come and babysit for me because I've got to go here and I've got to go there and you know what I mean it's, it's awful it really is toxic psychological manipulation you know um, and you know there are steps to break free but they are steps you know so trying to do it alone is hard so start talking to people first of all click on my links in this video I do have to go click on the links in this video okay and broaden your knowledge learn as much as you can there's also this book here called power it says surviving and thriving after narcissistic abuse by Shahida Arabi can you see can you see yeah so this is available online but you don't have to actually buy a book yet well, you don't have to buy a book ever it's all up to you all the information you need to learn about the person you are with is online and if you decide after watching this that you're not going to take any action at all and you really really need to be with them and you really can't live without them and you know what I'm saying is right but it's just not the right time to leave and it's just not the right time I just want you to know that there never is a right time there really never is a right time and what they what they have done to you which is what was done to me is they erode they erode the person that you are so the person you are all your loves your likes your dislikes the person that makes you you is gone and you're like a puppet on these strings and when you cut those strings it is bloody painful and it's bloody difficult let me tell you now I am a DJ I'm sure you all know that I didn't play music for two years anywhere not even in my car nowhere not because he said I couldn't but because he just eroded that side of me away it is so hard to explain in in this in this video but it's absolutely heartbreaking. Um, and like I said before, you end up believing that any abuse you get, whether it's verbal, emotional, physical, is your fault. That's what they want you to think. And that's how you end up actually, that's what you actually end up believing to be true. I can tell you it's not true. A hundred percent it's not true. These people will never trade. There is not one single success story anywhere among any of the psychiatrists, psychologists that I've been reading that their stuff, um, there's nothing on the internet. There's no success story where someone has stayed in a narcissistic relationship and it's all been okay and it's all worked out. It just doesn't happen. These people just do not change. All they give you is these promises, these promises, promises, promises that it's going to change, it's going to get better and it never does. It never does. And actually, in the end, you just become this shell of your former self, if you're lucky. There have been people, there have been people who have become very, very violent when their partners have tried to leave, you know, and they're, you know, it's hard, it's hard, because sometimes it can get to the point where They'll think if I can't have you, no one can. And they will try and seek to destroy you, literally destroy you and end your life. And I've seen that happen. I, I, it's, it's awful. It's absolutely awful. So you are worthy. You are 100% worthy of respect. There are relationships out there where people will treat you very, very kindly with a lot of respect, you know, and they will want you to be you. They will love you for who you are. You know, it does exist. It really does. But particularly if you have children, you can't ignore this. There's lots of children um, of narcissists who have who have grown up to become very mentally unstable. And I heard an experience just last week in a local domestic abuse group about a lady who's teenage children. She's got a boy and a girl in their teenage years. And both of them have tried to commit suicide because of their dad. You know, it's awful absolutely awful so like I say there's different types of narcissism don't think they're all the same they're, they're not all the same but they all underneath the, the tip of the iceberg is the same but what's on the top what you can see can be different so obviously some of some are, are more violent than others you know um, there's covert narcissism there's different types of narcissism but underneath it all it is all about that form of control that is they are better than you and 
you know, this inflated sense of, of ego and self-importance and that because underneath their self-esteem is so low and underneath they really probably hate themselves. That You know, they don't really like themselves very much. So when they put you down and, and they've got you on the back foot, they've got you exactly where they want you, makes them feel bigger, makes them feel more important, more valuable, you know. Um, but yeah, I really, really want to encourage you and thank you for watching. Please click on the links and just explore more, explore as much as you can. Um, and you can do this, you can really do this. No matter how hard it is, you can do this. Learn, get support, find people who you can talk to if they're not in you, if they're not family members, fine. It might be a work colleague, someone you work with who's a really good friend, who you feel you can confide in talk to somebody don't keep it all in here because this is your own worst enemy start writing things down keep a secret little diary or anything so you can write down what's happening to you because even though you want to believe that this person really loves you i'm so sorry to tell you that they don't um and that in itself can just be so heartbreaking to think that oh my god i've put up with all of this because i thought they really loved me this is not real, real love. It really isn't. Um, but you know, in the in the link, in sorry, in the description, the links to the YouTube channels are fantastic. These people that are doing these videos on YouTube, oh my God, it's all there. It's all there. So I beg you to click on some of these links. Go and watch some of these videos. Learn, learn, learn. Maybe do the webinar. It's free. Do the webinar. You know, maybe that's enough. Who knows. But there's one guy in the, in one of the links who actually lives in America. He's been through it. And now he, he, he invites people to actually physically call him on the phone in America. He says he, he accepts calls all the time for people who want advice. You know, there is a lot of help. There is a lot of support. You're not on your own. No matter where you live in the world, you're not on your own. You see? And what's another thing that's really interesting is that my my ex used to make me believe that a lot of the problems we had were cultural differences. They weren't. And let me tell you now, the more I learn about this, the more courses I go on, the more I study, the more I learn, the more I realise they're all the same, no matter which corner of the planet they're from, right? All of these narcissists are the same. And all of these experiences are so similar, maybe just wrapped up in a different package, but the core of it is the same because... It's a personality disorder. It is a psychiatric disorder. These people are not well. They're not well. Okay? So it isn't. They might try and use um, things, you know, to make you believe that, oh, it's just this cultural thing and this and that and this and that, especially if you are in an interracial um, relationship. You know, they will often want you to believe that they'll just use that as another way to control you basically i was talking to a lady the other day on the facebook group one of the facebook groups and she said that her ex-husband is now having a go at her because she's teaching her two-year-old their two-year-old son to call him um papa or something and not pepe or whatever it's so random but in his culture they're supposed to call them something else you know and she's saying it's okay to call him but he's two years old this boy he's two years old and her ex is telling her, her, her that, she, that he's going to take her to court for the word that she's teaching their two-year-old son to court. It's absolutely insane. You see, this is another thing I want you to remember. If it seems nuts and you're actually getting really persecuted and blamed for something that seems really trivial, it is. You haven't done anything wrong. I had to say to this lady on the Facebook group, you haven't done anything wrong by teaching your two-year-old son to call his dad Papa. What's wrong with that? Nothing's wrong with that. You see? So, I want you to remember this, all of this, and thank you for joining me. And hi, and I'm so sorry I haven't replied to your comments. I've been so focused on this, but I do have to go out now. Um, so I'm gonna post this on YouTube, on my new, I've got a new YouTube channel. Yeah, where I'm gonna talk about like lots of different things and stuff, you know, to encourage people and inspire people based on what I've been through. So at some point I'll do videos about autism, about ADHD, about bariatric surgery, going from fat to slim. And yeah, I'm going to cover loads of things. So um, thank you so much for joining me and um, 
speak to you soon and stay safe. Bye.